Thank you for coming for Julian, and thank you to the SEP for Add organizing this up. very important Put the rally. Up. Yeah. The, the persecution of Julian Assange must end. Yeah. Or it will end in tragedy. The Australian Government and Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull have an historic opportunity to decide which it will be. They can remain silent, for which history will be unforgiving. Or they can act in the interests of justice and humanity and bring this remarkable Australian citizen home. <laughs> Julian does not seek special treatment the Australian Government has clear diplomatic and moral obligations to protect its citizens abroad from gross injustice. In Julian's case, from a gross miscarriage of justice and the extreme danger that await him should he walk out of the Ecuadorian Embassy in London unprotected. We know from the Chelsea Manning case what Julian can expect if a US extradition warrant is successful. The United Nations has called it torture. I know Julian well. I regard him as a close friend, a person of extraordinary resilience and courage. I've watched a tsunami of lies and smear engulf him endlessly, vindictively, perfidiously, and I know why they smear him. In 2008, a plan to destroy both WikiLeaks and Julian was laid out in a secret document dated 8th of March, 2008. The authors were the Cyber Counterintelligence Assessment Branch of the US Defense Department. They described in detail how important it was to destroy, and I quote, the feeling of trust that is WikiLeaks' centre of gravity. This would be achieved, they wrote, with threats of exposure and criminal prosecution and an unrelenting assault on reputation. The aim was to silence and criminalise WikiLeaks and its editor and publisher. It was as if they planned a war on a single human being and on the very principle of freedom of speech. Their weapon would be personal smear and their assassins would be journalists, the very people who were meant to keep the record straight and tell us the truth. The irony is that no one has told these journalists what to do. I call them Vichy journalists, after the treacherous Vichy government that served the German occupation of wartime France. I've been a journalist for many years. I've never known such corruption of my craft. It is as if a world of illusions has consumed the last vestiges of honest media in the cause of decaying power, its wars and witch hunts. Let me give you one example. Last October, the ABC journalist Sarah Ferguson interviewed Hillary Clinton over whom she fawned, and as I quote, the icon for your generation. This was the same Clinton who threatened to obliterate Iran and who as US Secretary of State in 2011 was one of the instigators of the invasion and destruction of Libya as a modern state with the loss of 40,000 lives. Like the invasion of Iraq, it was based on lies. When the Libyan president was murdered publicly and gruesomely with a knife, Clinton whooped and cheered. Thanks largely to her, Libya became a breeding ground for ISIS and other jihadists. Thanks largely to her, tens of thousands of refugees fled in peril across the Mediterranean and many of them drowned. In leaked emails, published by WikiLeaks, we know that Hillary Clinton's foundation received millions of dollars from Saudi Arabia 
and Qatar, the main backers of ISIS and terrorism across the Middle East. From these disclosures, we know that as Secretary of State, Clinton approved the biggest arms deal ever, $80 billion worth. Today, Saudi Arabia is using these weapons to crush the starving and stricken people of Yemen. Sarah Ferguson, a highly paid ABC reporter, raised not a word of this with Hillary Clinton sitting in front of her. Instead, she allowed Clinton to attack and smear Julian Assange as, and I quote, a tool of Russian intelligence and a nihilistic opportunist who does the bidding of a dictator. Julian was offered no right of reply to this shocking interview, this orgy of defamation broadcast by Australia's publicly funded state broadcaster. As if this wasn't enough, Ferguson's executive producer, Sally Neighbour, followed the interview with a vicious retweet. Assange is Putin's bitch. We all know it. This is what I mean by corruption. This is what I mean by vichy journalism. It was an insult to the very meaning of journalism. There are many other... <coughs> There are many other examples. The Guardian, reputedly once a great liberal newspaper, has conducted a vendetta against Julian Assange. Like a spurned lover, The Guardian has aimed its personal, petty, inhuman and cowardly attacks at a man whose work it once published and profited from. It is as if Julian has been declared fair game and too poor to sue for defamation. The former editor of The Guardian called the WikiLeaks disclosures, which his newspaper published in 2010, one of the greatest journalistic scoops of the last 30 years. Awards were lavished on the paper as if Julian did not exist. WikiLeaks revelations became part of The Guardian's marketing plan to raise the newspaper's cover price they made money, often big money, while WikiLeaks and Julian struggle to survive. With not a penny going to WikiLeaks, a hype Guardian book led to a lucrative Hollywood movie deal. The book's authors, Luke Harding and David Lee, gratuitously abused Assange as a damaged personality and callous. They also revealed the secret password Julian had given the Guardian in confidence and which was designed to protect a digital file containing the US Embassy cables. With Julian trapped in the Ecuadorian Embassy, Luke Harding of the Guardian, who had made big bucks on the back of Julian and Edward Snowden, stood among the police outside the Embassy and gloated on his blog that Scotland Yard may get the last laugh. This is how far, this is how far the craft of journalism has sunk. Vichy journalism. The question is why? Julian Assange has committed no crime. He has never been charged with a crime. The Swedish episode was bogus and farcical and he has been vindicated. Karen Ackleson and Lisa Longstaff of Women Against Rape summed it up when they wrote, and I quote them, the allegations against Assange are a smokescreen behind which a number of governments are trying to clamp down on WikiLeaks for having audaciously revealed to the public their secret planning of wars and occupations and their attendant rape, murder and destruction. The authorities care so little about violence against women that they manipulate rape allegations at will." Unquote. Most of this truth, most of this truth was lost or buried in a media witch hunt that disgracefully associated Julian with rape and misogyny.
The witch hunt included voices who described themselves as on the left and as feminist. Shame on them. <laughs> Throughout this smear campaign, the threat of Julian's extradition to a hellhole in the US was willfully ignored. Documents released by Edward Snowden show Julian, <coughs> Julian to be on what is called a manhunt target list. One leaked memo, <coughs> official memo, reads as follows, and I quote, Assange is going to make a nice bride in prison. Screw the terrorists, he'll be eating cat food forever. In Alexandra, Virginia, the suburban home of America's war-making elite, a secret grand jury, a throwback to the Middle Ages, has spent seven years trying to concoct a crime for which Julian Assange can be prosecuted. But this isn't easy because the US Constitution protects publishers, journalists, and whistleblowers. Julian's crime is that he broke a silence. No investigative journalism in my lifetime can equal the importance of what WikiLeaks has done and the public service it has provided in calling rapacious power to account. Julian, Julian and WikiLeaks have pushed back a one-way moral screen to reveal that imperialism, our imperialism, the often disguised imperialism of liberal democracies, is never benevolent or moral as it contrives to appear, as it's presented so often in the media, but committed to endless warfare, to the conquest of our resources, our lives, our dignity, if we allow it. When Harold Pinter, when Harold Pinter, the great playwright, accepted the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2005, he referred to a vast tapestry of lies upon which we feed. He asked why, and I quote, the systematic brutality, the widespread atrocities, the ruthless suppression of independent thought of the Soviet Union was well known in the West, while American imperial crimes, quote, never happened. Even while they were happening, they never happened. He was referring to the great silence. Julian and WikiLeaks have smashed this silence and exposed how the imperial game is played by those with liberal pretensions. Their revelations have lifted the mask of those who regard whole nations in terms of their usefulness or expendability. And that is why his life is in danger. Seven years ago, seven years ago here in Sydney, I arranged to meet a prominent Liberal member of the Federal Parliament, Malcolm Turnbull. I asked him to deliver an urgent appeal from Julian's lawyer to the government of Julia Gillard. Turnbull and I talked for several hours about Julian and his right to justice. He seemed sympathetic. We also talked about Turnbull's famous victory in the 1980s when as a young lawyer he had fought the British government's attempts to suppress free speech and prevent the publication of the book Spycatcher in a way a WikiLeaks of the time for it revealed the crimes of great power. When I met Turnbull, the Labour Prime Minister Julia Gillard had declared WikiLeaks illegal and wanted to cancel Julian's passport, in effect his birthright, until she was told she couldn't do it. She was told by the AFP she couldn't do it, <coughs> that Julian had committed no crime, that WikiLeaks was a publisher whose work was protected under Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, to which Australia was one of the original signatories. In abandoning Julian Assange, <coughs> an Australian citizen, and colluding in his persecution, Gillard's outrageous behaviour 
force the issue of Julian's recognition under international law as a political refugee. Tiny Ecuador invoked the 1951 convention and granted Julian refuge in the embassy in London. There was no question under international law, but his life was in danger. Julia Gillard has recently been appearing with Hillary Clinton as pioneering feminists. It's reassuring to know that political satire is back. In these gigs, Gillard has not referred to her distinction as the first Prime Minister on whose watch Australian soldiers were killed in Afghanistan. We know from WikiLeaks war logs the atrocious nature of that imperial war in Afghanistan. If there's anything to remember Gillard by, it is a sycophantic, embarrassing speech she made to the US Congress soon after she demanded the, uh, <coughs> the illegal cancellation of Julian's passport. Is that, how, is that how we'll remember Malcolm Turnbull? Julian's father, Julian's father has written to Malcolm Turnbull just the other day. It is a moving letter in which he has appealed to the Prime Minister to bring Julian home. He refers to the real possibility of a tragedy. I have watched Julian's health deteriorate in the years of confinement without sunlight. He has a relentless cough but is denied safe passage to and from a hospital for even an x-ray. The Australian government has the diplomatic power to intervene. For years the governments in Canberra offered no help, no help to Julian. Now the responsibility of the Turnbull government could not be clearer. It goes to the very heart, the very heart of human justice and morality. Malcolm Turnbull can remain silent or he can seize the opportunity and fulfil his government's obligations and defend the life of a man who is a true Australian hero. <clears throat> he can bring Julian Assange home. The choice is his. Thank you.